Hello everybody and welcome. I am excited to present you something very special. A first look at the upcoming Making History expansion that includes some exciting new features and the new stuff in Kerbal Space Program 1.4 that is already out there. Please keep in mind that everything shown here is from a pre-release build of the game. Before we dive into this, please subscribe to my channel for more crazy space stuff and share this with all of your friends. It would help me a lot. And yeah, I swear I did not milk this topic until I got 14 items for this list to match the 1.4 version in an attempt at being clever. Alright, let's launch this sucker! Number 14. Under the Hood Okay, the dry stuff first, but stay with me, it gets exciting later on. The development team upgraded the underlying engine to Unity 2017 1.3 and also upgraded its particle engine. This should make for a more stable and overall better gaming experience. In my brief time with the preview release, I was not yet able to discern any performance differences. There are also some minor bug fixes, I won't go into detail here. Number 13. New Languages People who always wanted to switch KSP to Francais, Deutsch, Italiano or Portuguese do Brasil can now do so. There is also support for Portuguese keyboard layout and some localization related bug fixes. Number 12. Editor Switch One of the first things I noticed when starting to experiment with KSP 1.4 was a new button in the editor. You can now seamlessly switch between the vehicle assembly building and the space plane hangar. This is great news for someone like me who likes to design big space cruisers in the hangar, but then adds boosters to them to get them into orbit within the VAB. Number 11. New launch sites. Now this surprised me in a really pleasant way. When you're done building your vehicle, you can select where you want to launch it from. The VAB offers you to launch from either the regular Kerbal Space Center or the new Womerang site, which I believe is a take on the Baikonur Cosmodrome due to its geographical position. This will probably come in handy for historic missions, for instance some Sputnik or Soyuz recreations. And when you want to launch from the SPH, you can either use the regular runway or the island runway. Speaking of launch sites, Number 10. Visible launch sites. This is a small but really, really great quality of life improvement. What am I talking about? You can now see where your space center is on the globe in the map view. Players in the past years have been using workarounds like setting up flags at the end of the runway to find their way back home. All of that is obsolete now since we can just use the official markers the developers have provided. Number 9. Revamped parts. A lot of the original parts have received an update. That includes the orange tank. Actually, the entire 2.5 meter tank lineup, also the three-man command capsule and many others like all of the decouplers. Some parts also received some stat upgrades. For instance, some monopropellant and xenon tanks now have reduced capacity. Something that is a bit of a disappointment is the three-man capsule. While it now also has a great new interior and the position of the hatch lines up with all other parts with hatches, its pointy bit still doesn't sit flush with 1.25 meter parts like the big parachute, a nose cone or the shielded docking port. A shame really. Still, nice to see something new here. Number 8. Part Variants this is really neat. Not only do you now have the option to use different visuals for a part, you can preview how which variant will look like in the part list when clicking on this little icon here. Personally, I'm not so much of a fan of the new white fairing option, but maybe I just need to get used to it. I'm pretty sure modders are going to have a field day with this new feature. Number 7. Totally new parts. Yeah, now we're getting somewhere. Remember the outcry when Squad almost removed the donut tank from the game? Not only is it still there, KSP 1.4 gives it an entire family with the baguette and the dumpling. If you opt for the Making History expansion, you will also have access to a plethora of new tanks and engines, all with familiar shapes and very suggestive names. There is, for instance, the E1 Mastodon engine, a clear hat tip to the legendary Rocketdyne F1 that powered the Saturn V first stage, and which I can totally get behind as a huge fan of the band Mastodon. There's also the MEM, the Mooner Excursion Module. Guess what that is reminiscent of? And we now get 5 meter tank parts, which enable you to build really massive rockets. 
Right up there is also the new engine plate category, which enables you to better cluster engines. You can now for instance use three-way symmetry and don't have to worry about a center attachment node. The engine plate part takes care of that for you. You can also increase or reduce it in length to accommodate the engine you want to add. On stage separation, the shroud stays with the dropped stage. Personally, I think this is a very clever design. There are also new white structural parts with lots of attachment nodes. I know I'm going to have a lot of fun with those. And there are new wheels inspired by the Lunar Rover. In combination with the smaller structural parts, you can build some really cool lightweight rovers. And do wheelies! Number 6. New engine sounds. This might sound ha ha. Like a small thing to you, but for me the sound of a game is very important because it acts on a subconscious level how you perceive the experience. The new engines have a really deep rumble that feels realistic to me. Not that I'm an expert, unfortunately I haven't had the privilege yet to witness a real rocket launch. But I enjoy hearing the rumble that they make and the nervous hiss when you shut them down. Not sure about the noise of the jet engines though. Number 5. New Spacesuits The gang has gotten a new wardrobe. If you click on the coat hanger icon next to your Kerbal before launch, you can select the classic white spacesuit, which is of course NASA inspired, or a new variant, modeled more on the Russian spacesuits. This isn't just a new texture, these are completely new models as far as I can see. One might assume that this could offer modders the opportunity to expand on that and give us completely different looking crew members one day. Maybe almost human looking characters for realism overhaul? Number 4. Free for Veterans The Making History expansion will be free for all who have purchased Kerbal Space Program before May 1st, 2013. Everybody else, and yes, that includes me, will have to scrounge up $14.99 US in order to enjoy the expansion. Personally, since I have racked up more than 3600 hours in KSP, I have had more than my money's worth already and I will buy the expansion. And it appears that a large portion of the Kerbal Space Program forum users agree with me. You might want to wait until your favorite mods are compatible though. Yes, since KSP 1.4 is a new version and the expansion includes new parts, many of the old mods will no longer work correctly. Number 3. Kerbal Parachutes A literal lifesaver for your crew. When your Kerbal, for whatever reason, exits a vehicle on flight, he or she can glide safely to the ground and will not end up as a pile of dust. You can also try to catch your vehicle again in flight, although I'm not sure if you wouldn't be too fast for that for the Kerbal to grab the ladder. I wasn't able to do that in the short time I had with KSP 1.4, but maybe you can comment with your experiences. Have you managed to catch a vehicle in flight with a parachute? Let me know. Number 2. The Mission Builder Okay, this is a big one and way too much to give you all the details in just one overview video. I will present you with some more details about this in a future video, unless everybody else has already done so, because what's the point then? Anyways, this thing is mighty. You can basically build a flowchart of what needs to happen in what order and with what conditions. For instance, in this very simple mission I just defined that the launch vehicle needs to be at least 10 meters tall and the crew needs to be comprised of a pilot and a scientist. I also want to send it into a polar orbit around Kerbin and then make it land back home on our planet. There are a myriad of options you can choose from, you can write a custom mission briefing and also include achievements for certain milestones a player can reach within your mission. When flying you will see the target orbit in map view and can then fly your mission accordingly. You can feel a lot of effort went into this and I can't wait to really give this thing a go. And number one, Stock Apollo. This is a bit of a pet peeve of mine, that's why it is a number one. I have built a few Stock Apollo vessels ever since I started playing KSP, but we now finally have the possibility to use stock parts that, well, look the part. But as things stand now, you will need to experiment with fuel levels in those new 5 meter parts, since this thing here won't take off with everything filled to the brim. Luckily Kerbal Engineer sort of works with the new release, however not reliably. I have made this work though and can happily report that the Kerbal Eagle... Kegel? has landed safely, in a Kerbal kind of way. Oh well, as long as a flag is planted and we can get back home, everything's peachy. 
Alright, that's my 14 facts about KSP 1.4 and the Making History expansion, which will be released on March 13th. I hope this will rekindle the interest in the game once more, since it offers players a lot of new stuff to experiment with. But what do you think? Are you excited about the release? Have you already upgraded to 1.4? Will you spend the extra money on the DLC? Let me know in the comments below, I would love to hear from you. Also, I hope you enjoyed this and consider subscribing and liking this video. If you already have, you're awesome! Please make sure to activate the notification bell since videos sometimes appear hours later in the subscriber feed for reasons. You can also join me on my social thingies, the links are in the description. Thanks for watching, goodbye!